everybody. Wow, it's bright up here. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming today. I am so proud, as my name is Nicole Nomsamoyo, to present my project to you, Ukubuta. A Zulu term meaning together. This project began with what I call a crisis. Not a personal crisis, but a global one. Today, there are more than 7 billion people on this planet. And of those 7 billion, 1 billion of them live in terms that we call slums. Slums are defined by the United Nations as having inadequate access to water, sanitation, and secure housing. Slums are also evidence that our cities are growing at a very rapid rate. And as much as we can deny this or ignore it, today more people have access to a mobile phone than they do to a flushing toilet. I would love to save the world, but I had to scale it down. So I took it to a place that I call near and dear to my heart. South Africa. South Africa, as beautiful as it is, has a very serious history that it cannot deny, the apartheid regime. It's important to look back because due to architectural and planning practices, there was a means to divide and conquer a nation. If we look at this map behind us, the little white dot in the middle is what we call the CBD, Central Business District. Directly around it are what we call the white-only areas. And in those colors scattered around the white-only areas are areas that we called townships. These were African-only areas. So you can already start to see a disparity in terms of the dividing and conquering of the nation, ensuring that there was inequality from the very beginning. So today, more than 20 years after the apartheid, these conditions are still prevalent. The 2004 election was deemed the toilet election. These cities are growing at such a rapid rate. The capital city of South Africa, Pretoria, sees more than 10,000 migrants coming into the city every single month. It's almost impossible for governments to maintain and implement new infrastructure. So how? How do we do this? How do we start looking at this? I started to look at a township called Mamelodi, and on the periphery of a site of the township was a site. This site was occupied by people who were given the land. So in terms of a slum, it wasn't what we would normally call a slum because people were staying there. However, it had slum-like conditions. There were over 2,000 people on the site. 800 homes, but only one toilet to share per eight homes. This is what was given to the government by them at the time. So I decided to take a deeper look, and I visited the site, and I found beautiful people there. They were gorgeous. They were amazing. I saw women collecting buckets of water every single day as it was delivered. I was also disheartened when I saw toilets dispersed around the site. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to use these toilets, especially since they were scattered along the edges of the site. That means we're questioning safety and hygiene. It's just not right. So, ew, this picture is quite disgusting. I know. But you see dirt and a very disgusting image. But if you look a little bit closer, if you compare what was in the pit latrines to what was going on in people's homes, you start to see innovation. To me, that's hope. I saw it even in my grandmother's house. So with everything I know, it's not just about giving people things. We need to think about the community well-being as designers. We need to think about the political, 
cultural and environmental implications of what we design. And so, the birth of Ukubuta, the exact opposite of what the apartheid did. Apartheid meaning apart, Ukubuta meaning together. So, as a very proud young Zimbabwean girl who was brought up in South Africa, I took it back to my history. And I started to look at these beautiful forms and huts that were created to be environmentally friendly and quite easy to construct. So I started to analyze step by step how these forms were created. I started to experiment with shapes. And then I started to think, let's do a how-to. How to construct, how to harvest, and how to empower. So just like IKEA and this dome that we're in, this beautiful dome, I started to think about basic connections. How can we get the communities to start building these spaces by themselves? So I looked at these domes, I looked at weaving, but more importantly, I looked at the skeleton of the project. How is this going to work? We need a digester. I'm not reinventing anything. I'm celebrating them. So I looked at a digestive process, and I also looked at how we can convert waste into money. I looked at what is the process of you know, making sure that waste can give us the best output. And then I also looked at water, and it's really all around us. Every morning, you wake up, you see fog, you see mist, there's rain. Why aren't we extracting from the environment? So yes, I started to disperse wells around this site because this is really about creating a hub, a space that can be used by people, that will empower them, but secretly that architecture can do most of the work because no one wants to clean up after another. So I looked at water. Where will water be collected on the site? I looked at waste. How can I create a safe environment for people to come and use the space, but it gives back to them? The architecture doing most of the work and pushing the waste into a fertilizer plant, which goes back into a community garden. And then energy. Energy is important. Our waste matters. Your waste matters. So I looked at, okay, let's start collecting this energy on site and letting people come and use this hub. So as designers, this is the blank canvas that I saw. But let's start thinking about creating a hub, a community place where the well-being of the community comes first. We're not just delivering toilets on site. We're reimagining these spaces. It's not enough to just drop things here and there because we think these are our basic needs, so we're going to deliver them. We have to think beyond that. We have to think how we can educate people in these spaces and empower them. So that come election time, we're not just thinking about waste or whether we have running water, but we're thinking about education and job creation. So yes, it was a very exciting project, and I really imagined the energy of this space and really drew in the colors of the community. But Ukubuta is not just a South African crisis. This is a global crisis crisis. Our cities are growing at a very rapid rate. It is each and every one of our responsibilities to start disrupting an industry that has very little innovation. So, just like we've done today, I'm going to teach you something very quickly. Repeat after me. Ukubuta. Let's try it. Ukubuta. Yes, that's what we've done today. We have gathered, and I am so happy to be here and share a way of thinking forward as we rethink the way service delivery appears in our communities. Thank you.